Hi everybody, I'm Lee Krut and I would like to welcome you to my course on mixing contrasting elements, such as creepy and cute in watercolor portraiture. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. I'm a Norwegian painter, mainly focusing on portraiture and my preferred medium being watercolor. I've been working as a full-time artist for the last few years. The reason I started using watercolor is simply because I got a watercolor set as a gift and I stuck with the medium ever since. And as you can see, my original watercolor set is um, very well loved. <laughs> I've of course dabbled in other mediums as well, but I've always found myself going back to watercolor. One of the things I love the most about it is the way that you can choose to either control the watercolor and make it do what you want, or let the watercolor do what it wants and, in a way, if you will, um, leave it up to fate. I value and strive for a smooth look in my paintings and watercolor already does that for you without much effort on the artist's part. And really, I also love how convenient it is. The fact that it's so portable and doesn't require much setup is a big plus to me, even if I don't really travel with my art supplies much. It's also very compact and you don't need a huge workspace or a well-ventilated area like you would when painting with um, oil and acrylic. That being said, there are of course also limits to watercolors and I sometimes find myself having to stop working on a piece. Only because I'm not able to layer anymore, my colors turn too muddy or the paper is giving up on me. I have considered switching mediums to acrylic or oils to hopefully improve my work, but I think that no matter what, I always continue using watercolors as well. Something else I'll also never stop using is glitter. From seeing my art and the fact that I add an element of sparkle to almost every artwork, you've probably realized I love glitter. Um, other than the fact I simply just think it looks nice, I also add shiny elements because it gives the painting another dimension. No matter what kind of camera you use, you'll never be able to fully capture and portray glitter through a photograph or even a video in the same way it appears in real life. I think it's important when everything is digitalized and on the internet to have something you can truly only experience in real life. You can of course appreciate it through a computer screen as well, but it's a different experience from seeing it in real life, and I really love that aspect of glitter and metallics. Now if my first love is watercolor, my second love is definitely portraiture. In fact, I might love portraits just a little bit more. Especially portraits of subjects looking straight at the viewer, like the ones I typically do. Even though it's essentially drawing the same pose over and over again, there's still so much variety that can be made. In my opinion, when you have a simple pose, the subject's emotion becomes the focal point, and the key to a successful painting is definitely the eyes. For me, as an artist, the best way to connect with the viewer is through the eyes of my subject matter. When it comes to my inspirations, I'm often inspired by darkness. And I think it's always important to try and see beauty in darkness, which is something I hope to portray through my art. I'm sometimes told my art looks scary, but I choose to take it as a compliment. Um, of course, I hope my paintings can be both scary and beautiful. Growing up, I was very into manga and anime, and it definitely played a big role in forming my art style. Although I hope it's not the first and only thing people think of when they see my art, I also don't want to get rid of the anime influences in my style since it was such a big part of my earlier artist years. I've never studied art professionally and everything I know I've learned through online tutorials um, and mostly experimenting by myself. Thus, being what you might call self-taught, I'm only able to teach you the things that I know but I, hope, but I hope I'll be able to share some of my tips and tricks with you. The best way to learn any skill really is to learn from your mistakes and correct them, and maybe it would be good to not even see them as mistakes in the first place. I hope that even if you have studied art, maybe I'll be able to provide a new point of view. I hope to be able to help you further develop your own unique style by taking you through the stages I went through when I first started out myself. 
Although my course is focused on watercolor, I hope that you'll be able to apply my tips to a variety of mediums. What I want you to keep in mind when taking my course is that my way is definitely not the right way, and when it comes to art, there often is no right way. I think it's important to listen to the advice you're given, and then you can choose if you want to apply it to yourself or not. Although some of the suggestions I give during my course might not initially work for you, perhaps you'll be able to apply them to something that does work for you. I'm so grateful to be given this opportunity and I'm so happy you've chosen to take my course. Next I'll do a quick talkthrough of everything you will learn in each of the chapters. See you then!